Norton Antivirus included a cryptocurrency mining feature into its latest software, its Norton 360 subscription, which you already have to pay $105 a year for. And it just should piss us all off. It doesn't matter even whether you use the software or not, whether you're in cybersecurity, the more you pull back the layers on this thing, the more we should probably be reaching for our pitchforks because this massively changes just like so much of the trust we have in this industry. And starting with like this feature, first we can argue all day whether or not a software security, like endpoint protection software, if it's not just considered a rootkit at this point, because again, whether it's McAfee or Norton, it's really hard to get rid of it, but just let's go with me. It's an endpoint security software. They wanted to put in a mining software. And the reason they're saying they included it is because there's so many malicious malware miners. And while that's semi true, and I would kind of agree, a lot of miners tend to be the payload. So you exploit the system, you load your own miner on, and then you start mining it. Now, we're also talking about legitimate miners get flagged by antivirus all the time. So first, let's pause here. One of the things they're doing is they're saying, hey, whether you download any miner, typically they're gonna flag it or your browser's gonna flag it. So they're saying, don't use any of those, use ours. And theirs, because their endpoint software is signed, their miner is signed too. So all of a sudden, it's not flagged by malware analysis anymore. This, on some level is kind of terrifying because I'm not saying anyone's gonna do this, but a network administrator should, could just like turn this on for a small business. And now this feature is running on all those systems, but just go with me for a minute. Let's just pretend, sure, that's, that's what it's for. Let's look at the miner itself. And this is where it becomes just remarkably scummy, but it gets worse as we go on. First and foremost, you kick on the miner. The miner, most of the time when you do cryptocurrency mining, and this is just Ethereum, but all miners do this, you download the mining software and you point it at a wallet and you start mining away, it uses your GPU. Now, there's a couple tweaks here we can talk about, but first and foremost, the way those miners get paid is through a dev fee. Typically, it's like mm, one or 2%. So what this means is every 100 minutes of mine time, typically one minute, your miner will switch on over and mine to the developer's wallet. It's just a way of supporting the wallet, supporting their ongoing development. And it's also pointed at a pool because if you mine locally, it's really rare that you're gonna find a block, especially if you're mining Ethereum. So you mine to a pool and then they take 1%. So here's the thing though, is the Norton miner doesn't do that. It takes 15%. This is 15% of your mining on top of the $105 a year you're paying for the software. So one, we can get into the security ramifications of having a miner in your endpoint software, but let's just say it's a great idea. At this point, you're paying 15% instead of 1%. And yeah, sure, it's easier. You flick a switch. Nice hash is another mining software, like not a sponsor or anything like that, but that's like a double click and you install it and you can mine. But here's where it becomes even worse. Because it's such an elementary miner and it's not like its core thing isn't mining. It's supposed to secure your system antivirus, which is a whole nother discussion. But for this one specifically, there's no tweaks you can do for it. Like mining at, at its best is taking your graphics card and undervolting it and overclocking it. You pull back the power the card is using to generate a little less heat, and then you up the memory or the core, depending on what algorithm you're mining, but Ethereum, you're undervolting, you're overclocking, so you get the most juice out of your card, so your margins grow. Now, I looked up on like what to mine, like on Ethereum, and your best day on a good card, you're, you're not making 15%. Like maybe if Ethereum starts skyrocketing, eh, it will start growing a little bit, but then difficulty goes up and kind of gets complicated. But 15% of all your revenue is crazy. But because they're not doing any of the 
extra like tweaks to your card. They're not pull, they're not undervolting. They're not overclocking. Your card is running a lot hotter. So just like, let's look at this. Not only are you paying $105 a year for the software, you're paying 15% to be able to use this miner, which again, part of me wants to think it was just an open source miner like released under MIT they pulled in. Time will tell on that one. You're paying the software, the 15%, but it gets worse. You're not actually mining to your wallet. You're mining to the Norton portal. And the Norton portal only lets you move the money you mine to a single exchange, Coinbase. You're not even mining to your wallet. You're mining to your Norton account and they let you transfer it to only Coinbase. And I cannot even imagine the deal Coinbase struck with Norton to make them be like the exclusive partner. But on top of that, if it wasn't for the subscription fee and the 15% already, you also have to pay the gas fees to get your Ethereum over to the exchange. And then if you wanna sell it for like cash or US dollar, you're also now paying an exchange fee to get it there. In no way is this profitable in just abhorrent because they have to know this and know that most users are going to flick it on in this this solely is why i am so furious about it because norton is a trusted partner now whether if you're in cybersecurity, you tend to think a lot of these like mcafee and norton as kind of like friendly root kits because they can introduce vulnerabilities especially endpoint protection but just for the sake of argument, this is a trusted vendor. They are signed code. So if you're looking to secure your network, it would might even be like, we might see exploits, which just target Norton, turn it on and configure it to point to someone else's account. Now, this would probably be rare because you would need to have your license. And mind you, this software, their software security license only lets you license it for so many computers. So. Oh, so weird. But regardless of how you view Norton, for the general population, Norton Antivirus has been around so long, they're a trusted third party. And whether you believe this or not is irrelevant because most people who have Norton installed on their computer is uncles, aunts, grandparents who see this cryptocurrency thing. And look, there's so many scams right now with cryptocurrency. So they're installing it and they're hearing about cryptocurrency. And we know so many of the scams right now are, here's how you get rich quick with cryptocurrency. Here's how you can make more money. And now you have a trusted third party pushing this, this is how you get rich, just by hitting the checkbox in here, putting wear and tear on your hardware, heating up your house, I guess, that could be a good thing. Getting hit for 15%, like there's no way I can see this being profitable. So ultimately it's exploiting this trusted relationship they have with their clients to run this. And this is why I have such a guttural reaction to the story because you have a trusted third party, which has introduced a feature for any way I look at it. There is no way you're going to be able to make money out of that feature. This isn't against crypto mining. Like ultimately you wanna undervolt your card, overclock it, but you also need a custom fan curve because it's cheaper to replace your fan than it is to replace your card and they don't have any of those features. So I don't see how you could make money on this. Trusted third party introduces a feature really just to scam you out of more money and it just abuses this trusted relationship. And as a security professional, that we can't do that because so much of what we do is considered magic and no one gets to see behind the, the curtains to be able to see how it works. So here's the advice I would give. Use Windows Defender. If you're at home, if you run just a standard operating system, if you follow security best practices, Windows Defender is great. Now, if you're in an enterprise, you're probably gonna be using something like CrowdStrike or Silence or something like that. But for the typical home user, Windows Defender has become fantastic. I wanna know from you though, is this abuse of a trusted relationship? Am I making too much out of this? I mean, if you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with anyone else you think would get value out of this information. Thanks for watching and hack on.